So quite a while back, we covered an endgame Phoenix Protocol build that you could bring into any content you like, and come out supreme with little effort involved, and that one video has been doing the numbers for me and everyone involved. Now I've decided to revisit that build once again because of the new subclass changes, and also because I wanted to incorporate some feedback that I've received from the last one into this one here. This is a vastly improved version of the Phoenix Protocol 2.0 build we did, and will provide a wealth of overall protection and support that you're also familiar with. Great time to add to your collection with the Witch Queen just around the corner. So like the usual, before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it does go a long way for me. For the subclass, we will be using the Tomb of Grace as this makes the most sense when you're planning out a support of Vol with Warlocks and many of you are already aware of this. There is not a lot to cover around the subclass as much as to what I'm about to describe are things you are already familiar with. But in short, Benevolent Dawn will grant you ability energy when you empower or heal others within your rift, Guiding Flames will empower you and your team upon melee hits, and Divine Protection provides a overshield to your allies via your charge grenades, which can come in clutch for the most harrowing encounters you're in. All of these will play a pivotal role in the build, not just the one. Now for the interesting part of the build is how you can get fast grenades if you equip the Firebolt grenades. With the recent update, the following grenades have a standard cooldown of 1 minute 4 seconds compared to, say, fusions, with 1 minute 13 seconds. Although these grenades don't hit the hardest, they do offer the quickest in standard regen, so using them combined with Benevolent Dawn, for example, on your team, you can gain back a hefty amount of ability grenade energy within a few seconds. This here is where you're going to be able to make full use of the support of Vault, knowing that you can constantly provide an overshield to your friends or team within seconds of each other. For playing it safe though, I have my Discipline at Tier 6, with Elemental Ordnance for gathering wells as we go, Orbs of Restoration for collecting a small amount of energy for our lowest ability around, and Bountiful Well for doubling the amount of wells we get from 1 to 2. All of this, on top of the fast cooldown rates the subclass offers, is enough for you to two-man a dungeon with flexible ease while never running out of juice for keeping your friends and yourself alive. Now, ain't that nice? Of course, I know a number of you will be disagreeing with me as to why I'm using the Bountiful Well mods for the build since Ordnance and Fond of Mind make the most sense to have. Well, this is more of an optional choice as everything else put in place is generally all you need. Battlefall is good if you want more energy because of the demand, but if you decide to take this build in endgame, then you're going to want something a bit more reliable in the making. Now, Protective Light is going to be added to the build, let's make ourselves clear, as you can see, but we can add in the Enduring Well mod to increase the duration our wells created, which can be handy if you create the well, but don't have the time to get it. Of course, Seeking Wild mod might be a better option as well. Another one you could pick is the Well of Ordens mod for even more grenade energy, so while you're getting the initial burst from the well you collect, you're also getting that extra burst via the follow mod, which can stack as well, or you can even add in the Firepower mod, which is generally very similar. Truth be told, as long as you get a perfect amount of grenade regen back, your next choice in grenade energy will then come down to you. Now, weaponry don't need to fill in an initial role for your abilities as you're all good here, but it's wise to have a backup or two just in case. In my case, I decided to go with a max DPS hitting combo that deals as much DPS and damage within the time frame of my active super. Take my priming, which is the Chroma Rush with Feeding Frenzy and Wellspring. The weapon is fantastic for mowing through the battens within a short time frame with a 60 in the mag and fast reload speed. And on top of that, it also allows users the Wellspring perk, which is perfect for gathering extra energy when you need it most, so ideal for endgame. Alternatively, if I don't need that extra bit of energy, then I will always opt into the Vapebringer with Osmosis, which has a bit more power behind it and can be useful for creating wells if I decide to add in the Element of Armors mod. Do remember that this will only be effective against minor to major combatants and not so much against ultras or bosses, but you do what's best for you. In secondary wise, we then have the Cartesian coordinate with under pressure and Vorpal, and this is one of the most easiest and effective fusions you'll want to get for quick DPS within seconds. Against bosses, we can be hitting around 3 to 4k per shot landed, and with particle deconstruction applied, means this damage is only going to be getting so much more nastier by the seconds. Now, you see, this build will need a lot of ammo, which is why I have Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder times 2, Fusion Reserves, and Fusion Scavenger, which is going to be keeping me more powered up than Vega Strip. Having these mods as backup can be helpful when you burn through your special in a short time, but still have heavy available. This can and will come in clutch. Which brings us to our heavy, which is the Sleeper Simulate or the Thousand Voices. 
Now, depending on the boss I'm facing, either one of these weapons will fill in and do the roles as designed. Ideally, Sleeper will be great against bosses with easy hit crit spots, and when combined with Transverse's steps, means you can deal more DPS without the need of reloading so much. One kill on the other hand is suited against those with difficulty hit crits, and you just want to blaze them to death. Either one suits the build, as you can still make use of your wealth's duration before then. Now, moving on to the stats section, you should aim for 60 to 80 for discipline, as remember earlier, we have a lot of buffs going our way and will instantly recharge us. Then, you want your recovery at 70, so you can make use of your rifts, but also the Benevolent Dawn perk, that's all that I'm going to be giving you a number of buffs when your team stands in them. Having a healing rift with the ability will lead you to having more uptime for producing abilities as you please. And then lastly, you want to have your intellect at 90 to 100, as this is going to be working closely with Phoenix Protocol, and you want to have your intellect back up as quickly as possible at all times. Having it at this level means that you don't need to use mods such as Wall of Potency, Hands On, or Ashes of Assets to get this area back up efficiently, and will ultimately free your following slots up to accompany other more supportive mods. Once you then have these fallen in line, you should then have the following style mods that I have as shown on screen. So for starters, Head, you have Resilience, Fusion Rifle Finder x2 and Protective Light mod. Arm, we have Intellect and Fault of Might mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Cacusa Dampner, a Fusion Rifle Reserves, an Elemental Ordnance mod. Leg, we have Discipline, a Fusion Rifle Scavenger, Orbs of Restoration and Taking Charge. Bond, we have My Discipline, Park with Deconstruction and Bountiful Well mod. Like I mentioned, much of the build is pretty much a copy paste of an older version that we did, but improved upon via the notes from others and adding on the new updates introduced to the game. This version is more in line for support through and through, and opts in more focus for survivability and strength, which can be seen via the weapons we use and the abilities that back them up. Generally, you're still going to be providing around the clock support and buffs to how you see fit, and you'll be rewarded for doing so by quite a hefty amount when you use your divine protection as an example. Watching your grenades go from nothing to around 70 NG back in a short time frame is no laughing matter, and this can aid you with keeping your team overshield from start of a dungeon all the way to the end. Take the new dungeon that was released. The first boss we face is a pain to deal with while navigating the area, and his attacks can destroy your health in seconds if you're not careful as to where you are. With this key ability, you can provide extra cover to your team that can literally mean life or death. And from there, you can keep doing this over and over again until the big damage phase comes, and this is thanks to the ability tweak that Bungie went ahead and adapted for us. Then when it comes down to damage, you're pretty much ready to fire Hive God, as your super is going to be giving you that extra bonus damage, Front of Might, if you have it active, will be giving that extra zero damage, and then Particle is just going to be making your life even more easier mode at this rate. Against the final boss in the dungeon, I was pulling around 50, 70, to even 100k in damage, and with an effective team, could easily finish the mission in two runs, which shows just how powerful it can be, whether in groups or solo. Although, solo wise, it will take a bit more runs, of course, but the damage is still up there. It's a doozy of a build that requires less to fill in and just gets the job done, as the last build required too much for users to get things to work while trying to maintain their sanity in the process. I believe that the past build is good if you want to empower others by all means available, via wells only, and there's nothing wrong with that, as I have incorporated wells into my builds for months now with mixed results. But I believe this version of the build is more keen to those who want to support but only at ground level, such as against bosses and actively being a powerhouse rather than a combatant cleanup. Either way, both builds have their places in game and in history, as I hope it gives you more options to pick and choose how you want to play in end game. Do be sure to put down your opinions in the comment section and let me hear your thoughts on the two builds and tell me whether they're both good, bad, or whether there's still more adjustments to them. I would really love to hear. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.